So welcome to another unboxing video by theplayersaid.com. Today we're taking a look at the latest game from GMT, and this is called Fields of Despair, France 1914 to 1918. This game is designed by Kurt Lewis Keckley, and we're going to take a look inside. Now this is, as you can see, one of the big 3-inch coin-style boxes, and it's got a good weight to it, so I'm expecting quite a lot in the box. And this is, first off, let's just have a look at that unfantastic artwork. Love that. That is just a great, great painting. Epitomizes the Allied artillery there, and the kind of stuff that they, the conditions they were in. So here's the table of contents and the rules here. This is a hmm, 22 page rule book. And it's very typical GMT. So you're looking at full color images, actually very detailed images here explaining what's going on. Column text, important stuff in the blue boxes, very similar to a lot of their other style games. Doesn't look to be too bad. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll plow through this, it's not the thickest rule book. You know, it's not a 50 page rule book like some of the other games that they may have been in the past. Here's the important part. We're all gonna love these. Again, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful artwork. Look at those wounded soldiers crawling through the trenches there. I love the drab look of it. Kind of evokes what it was like. So this is the playbook. If you haven't played any GMT games, there's a lot of them come with a playbook. And this will literally walk you through step by step how to put the board and the game together, how to set it up. And then playing kind of step by step what what a turn or scenario will look like. This also contains all of the scenarios. It has the solitaire rules as well. There's one scenario that has solitaire. And then this is here, we're gonna it, it goes through play by plays of the games, which is always amazing. It explains all the rules and how everything would work. Here's your ex extended example of play. So you can just follow this, you can walk through it with with the book and it'll teach you everything of how to play it. We have here a couple of, look at that, a couple of player screens. So this is the German one, I believe. Oh, maybe they're exactly the same. Yeah, it looks like they're exactly the same. So the, the thin cardstock fold out. We've got a good player aid on the back here. And we're going to keep our pieces behind, hidden behind those, presumably. Here we have the... This is the map board. I'm going to call this out. The map board is a, a thing of beauty, and this is a this is a block war game. So the hex is much much bigger than kind of a a regular hex encounter game. And this is 22 by 34 for kind of a standard war game size that you'd expect. You've got various tracks on this side for Eastern Front kind of warfare, and then the naval warfare. And just look at that map. It's there's not a lot on there. It you know it's reasonably plain, but it's not bland and boring. You've got the important stuff going on here. Something I really like about the map is just the 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 font that they've used in the typeface for for the for the lettering, the wording. You know, it takes you back. Just the detailing on the sides of the board really just make the board something more than it is. It's not just a game board, it's gonna be, it's just pleasant to have on the table. So let me pull the box back out here and we're gonna start looking. It's, this is a block wall game to an extent, so we've got, here's all this, this is the sticker sheet. And like you would expect, you know, they've got four sides, you'd be turning them for different strengths. And there's different colors for each faction here, so you've got yeah, you know, the Germans and the French and the British Expeditionary Force, and you've got some Americans and Belgians as well. So that's the sticker sheet. We do have counters in this game. If you look at these, these are big, 
He needs to pop some of these out. Those came out very, very easily. Wow, that's actually very impressive. So those just fell out of there basically. And they need almost, there's, there's no perforations on them. So if you wanted to keep them like this, you could. I'll still clip them anyway, just because I'm compulsive like that. If I get these in focus here. So you got some artillery, different tokens going on. Uh, if you saw, we have the biplanes here, which we'll be using for scouting. Got the Red Baron here, that's so cool. So that's one of the sheets, those are one inch counters mostly. And then we've got these counters here representing control and uh, marking defensive lines and just tokens for bookkeeping on the board. We have a big player aid card. That's the next thing. It's a big fold out. You've got this is all this, this is the solitaire rules, so you can keep this out and just play along with it. That's very very detailed. They've got everything on there, so hopefully we'll be able to just avoid going back and forth. Oh, those are really, really nice. Love that. We have, what else have we got on the board? So we've got combat results tables for hits on five and six. And for fives, lots of, lots of different combat results tables there. And one for each player. Sequence of play for the two player player aid card. And these are identical it looks like, so everyone's going to get one of those each. Those are great, just regular card stock. And we also have here one for each of these players. Got technological advancements, artillery maintenance tracks, so there's going to be a lot of different things to take care of in this game. I'm not entirely sure, but I would presume that you'll be keeping these behind, hidden behind your screens, and that's kind of the stuff that you, some of the hidden stuff here. And you've got Central Power Strength Point Track as well. So we have two bags, and these are nice cloth bags. Sturdy, not going anywhere, red and blue. Presumably we'll be drawing the blocks from those. I'm not entirely sure on that one. Bag of dice, these are nice plastic black and blue dice. And then the blocks, so a big thing of blocks. These are similar in size to um, Triumph and Tragedy. Very similar in style and color, and in the same size and shape. They're kind of those smaller blocks. I've played games by Columbia Games, and those blocks are huge. These are not those, these are much, much smaller, so we'll be able to get more on the board. But I'll show you here real quick in the corner. You know, you can get a couple of these in a hex very, very easily. So there's going to be lots of space to have lots of these blocks on the board. There's also a bag of cubes. These are kind of Euro style cubes. Presumably these are going to be used for tracking all the stuff. Not entirely sure on that one. But really that's all there is. Bag of bags to store all that stuff in. But this game is going to shine in the, the amount of scenarios that there were. There's a lot to play around with. And I'm excited for that solitaire one. If you've no, watched anything or read anything by me, you know, I love the solo games. And be able to sit and play that out, that's going to be fun too. Something that the rules said that I thought was very interesting is that the early war scenarios aren't your traditional getting bogged down trench warfare, World War One. There's a lot of... It's a lot of maneuver getting into position. And that's what caused the stalemate in the end. But some of these 1914 early war scenarios are very, very mobile. And I think... Here we go. So this one's actually called the Mobile War. And I think that's going to be fun as a different aspect to the game. And this game relies heavily on things like a very, very intense fog of war. So if you don't maintain your your fighters and your reconnaissance, it's very, very hard to know what the enemy is doing. And that's a very thematic element. You know, the, the reconnaissance was very bad back in the day. And even then it wasn't acted upon well. But that's a personal opinion. That's uh, a historic opinion as well. But either way, very, very excited for this. Components are off the chart. Once again, just want to show off that beautiful, beautiful artwork that they've had commissioned here. That's just fantastic to look at. So thank you very much for watching, and watch out for a review on this one coming very, very soon. Thank you. Lonely to